You're still watching ways now. Today is World Sam Adeyemi Day. <laughs> we had to give him a shout out. Is um, our pastor Daystar Christian Center, you know, and um, is a friend of the house, friend of ways. We've had him on the show, and we're going to have him again. So I want to wish him a happy birthday. A very, very revolutionary leader, you know, an exemplary leader. So happy birthday to Pastor Sam Adeyemi of Daystar Christian Center. Olamide Onifade. Do you want to wish my pastor happy birthday or you just want to take what is in your news? Happy birthday, Pastor <laughs> Sam. Many, many more years of God's blessing. Absolutely. And goodness. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, um, Lamy, what did you find for us in the news? Oh, I have never called me or Lamy on Lamy on online. Really? On I... What happened? <laughs> I like the I like the full name. <laughs> okay, what's in the news? Well, um, this story particularly caught my attention because it just mirrored all I've been saying in the past few days in the area of tribal ethnicity and all that has bedeviled Nigeria quality. Mm -hmm. Um it's, um, it's a letter, it's an open letter written to the president by Ulisag Bakoba SN. And it just mirrored all I have been saying in totality. He mentioned the United Kingdom, how there are four countries existing in one country, and they've been able to, he's been able to thrive because everybody's allowed to grow at their own pace, not the way we've been modeled together. And we expect unity and diversity. Honestly, I don't even know what unity and diversity is. I don't understand where some people are diverse and at the same time they are united. Mm. And he also made reference to Switzerland. So um, I didn't even know that Switzerland is multi um, is a multi ethnicity um, country. Mm. There are about four of them, and they all coexist. In actual fact, they have different police, they have different executive, they have a different legislature, they even have a different constitution. Mm. All four ethnic groups existing in the same country so what they do is confederate their con federalism what i've always advocated a yeah. weak system of federal government is a style of federal government for its weaker where the center is weak and the regional the region the regions have more autonomy mm -hmm. so i think that would work for nigeria so just mirrored what i've been saying in totality and it caught my attention mm -hmm. so until we look into that um i'm not sure that um all this um all these issues that bedeviled us will leave anytime soon. Look oh. at the quality, it's been heating up, and it's all based on tribalism. Mm. Fulani people should go back to um, the IG the issue of the service chiefs and all that. Mm -hmm. So, the issue of nation building has been sacrificed, has been put on the altar, has been sacrificed on the altar of tribalism. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going on in the country. We're not talking about security anymore, we're not talking about education anymore. We're just so focused. Everybody's focus now is the issue of ethnicity. Hmm. So it is draining. It doesn't allow for for development. Hmm. So Absolutely. until we look into it, I, I don't see us doing anyway. Hmm. But if you are saying we should look into it, me, I'm even wondering: uh, would they be willing to do that? Because over the years, just imagine years of empowering one single person in Abuja. Everybody is going to the... Nobody want to, nobody want to willingly accept this kind of um, um, confederation that you're talking about because I, I, I'm used to power. You know, they say power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. I mean, so right now, the person Ua, at the center... Many, so Ua, I'm saying that how, how do many, we get them how to... Many, Ua, how many members of representatives do you have? House of Representatives. How mm. many do we have? Three hundred and something. Yeah. Sixty-nine or thereabout. And we have about a hundred and nine senators. Yes. They obviously outweighs the number of people you are talking about at the executive. Mm. If they can do their job, why not? This just call for a reform. No, but are you sure they even they are why willing to do the job? Why not? are forced to stay as one. Even they are why not willing to. Why can't we just to... conduct a referendum? Well, let me they. You're not getting me. Even they, they will not be willing to do the job because it, this same system you're talking about will weaken them as well. It will weaken their 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 power as well. So you, you think why, I will... you know why? Because we as the populace do not focus on the election of the legislature. We mm. are all centered on the executive. Yeah. Do you know the member? Do you know the house? Uh, the member of um, House of Rep that is representing you. 
as no. a constituent. Do Honestly, you know? I do not know. <laughs> so when we when we elect weak people into the legislature, do we expect to have a robust legislature? Hmm. It's not possible. So hmm. we deserve the kind of leaders we have at the moment. Absolutely. Right, so 2020 is around the corner. We still have a bit of time, not a lot of time, mm. but a bit of time to plan. Yeah. Let me quickly take my story because I just found the story very amusing and very, you know, you know how you look at someone and say it's misplaced priority. Um, the story goes the Wakano State High, no, Hizba Cops rather, has arrested a barber from Benue State, Elijah Ode, for allegedly giving his customers haircut, which offends the Islam. Islamic faith in the Sabungari area of um, the state. It was learned that the religious police force reportedly arraigned Ode on Tuesday and, and also had him remanded, you know, for giving haircut. According to the Benue state activist Smith Okoko, who first brought the matter to the attention of, the Ni uh, of Nigerians, the Baba, who is also a student, was arrested last Wednesday after two of his customers were caught with hairstyles deemed to be blasphemous to the Islamic religion. This is very interesting. I'm just wondering um, <laughs> what the world is turning into in terms of, for goodness sake, where, what is the role of um, haircuts in, in the issues that are really pressing on ground? Is this not a, a case of misplaced priority? There are people raping your, your girls in that um, state. There are people robbing people. There are people displacing people from their homes. You've not gone to go and look for those people to arrest. This is someone that is trying to earn a decent income and you are going about saying you want to arrest the person. I just saw this and I found it very amusing and I said, I hope, you know, this is not, uh, this is not true, but whatever it is, I'm I hope can I hear my Quickly, can I one my minute, uh, Lamy, so I can yeah. bring in Timmy. So this is a direct nexus with what I was talking about with my story. Mm. Look, we are all in the same country. We pretend to be in the same country, but look at what is happening over there. As a Nigerian, the constitution allows you to live anywhere in Nigeria. But in a situation where a particular religion, I'm sorry, a particular region now adopts Sharia law, and we are all, and in the constitution, we claim to be a secular state. So what they have done is obviously not constitutional, but nobody can say anything because we allow Sharia law. So our orientation is different. The religion is different. Everything is different. I think regional autonomy is the way to go. Mm. It's you, just different. And how do we say it's this? Different. How, how do we can on, how on earth can you get arrested for a, for, for a haircut? That is an infringement on their are you know the funny on thing, their human right. They are saying that this crime is not bailable. Though. Because all efforts hey, to Jesus. bail the young boy has proven a It's clearly abortive. unconstitutional. Ha. It's clearly unconstitutional. Can the Sharia court take precedence? Sorry, can the Sharia law take precedence over the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? No. It clearly doesn't. There's, why would it be bailable? Under the constitution, it's only murder. That is not bailable. Hmm. So why would just a hair court not be bailable? That is clearly unconstitutional, but because it is a Sharia law and it is it is from a, a part of Nigeria where we, we all can talk. Every other region, we are just we are just like we are locked up in slavery. Because hmm. you're not allowed to speak. Okay, let me we've used up all the time, but can I quickly take Tammy if you can just give us your story in a minute so we can go on a break? If you're here now. Tammy, are you there? All right. Yes, I am. Good. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Nice to have you on the show. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Owa. So, yeah, my story is about um, Bill Gates, mm -hmm. co-founder of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, expressing concern about immunity inequality that he says he feels that this would soon happen or has already started among different countries. And the immunity inequality simply means that a future where the wealthiest people have access to COVID vaccine but the rest of us do not have. Now, I read this article on the cable. It was written, it was an opinion written by Johnny Mayowa after an interview with Bill Gates. And the challenge with what they see or the concern that they see is that currently some countries, or to, uh, to go into many countries, you need to get COVID vaccine. Mm. However, they see a not so far future where the requirement would be that you should be vaccinated. 
not just um, that you, you test negative for COVID. So this is another immunity inequality that they feel could have been um, curbed, could have been curtailed initially. Yeah, so that, that's the story. Really. It's, it's a long read, oh, and it was quite insightful to go through this, yeah. to find that um, in Nigeria, if the, if the report is true, if reports from the Bill um, and Melinda Gates Foundation is true, if it's accurate, then Nigerians, regular Nigerians, I mean, not the ones that can fly abroad into other countries, but regular Nigerians, middle and lower class, may mm -hmm. not be getting COVID vaccine Absolutely. this year. Hmm. It is well. We are going to keep an eye on that story and um, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it back again as it's developing. But we'll take a very short break now. When we return, we'll be talking to our guests as we discuss morality. Stay with us. We'll be right back.